Five things are different between these two pictures. Can you spot what's different? Hang, Hang on, on for the loop. loop! Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Did you spot all the differences? I bet they did. No. Oh. Ooh. Are we gonna sing something? Is this We're gonna have? Oh. Oh. Do you want us to play this? Play the record. Okay. Go for it, Ricky. All right. Go, Ricky. Go. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Yeah. Wrong. 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 <gasps> oh, wrong, wrong, I get it, wrong, Tommy. Wrong, 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 yes. Wrong, 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 it's a record of wrongs. <laughs> Which is fitting because we are talking about forgiveness today. Yeah, so Jamie, on a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. uh, one being I collect grudges like Pokemon, and 10 being uh, I forgive so much, they call me a five giver. Mm. Where would you rank yourself on forgiveness? I would say that my number is pretty high on the scale because just the way that I was raised, we don't get our feelings hurt very easily. We just kind of try to move on. Um, yeah, so I would say I'm pretty high on the scale. Yeah, I'd probably say I'm probably in the middle uh, because I can forgive. Um, but I don't hold on to grudges, but like, it's like a firm handshake. It's, it's not like holding on. So how else am I supposed to know how far I can trust you? Yeah, I totally relate to that actually. I feel like I can let go of things really easily um, and continue and everything's fine, but it's really hard for me to trust that person to the same level as I did before yeah. what happened happened. <sighs> it can be hard not to keep a record of wrongs. But this episode is all about how love takes that record and does this. Something like that. Love is a word that we're called to show everyone. But sometimes people tangle it up. Sometimes people hurt our feelings. Sometimes they make mistakes. And sometimes forgiveness feels fake. Love asks us to truly forgive others with no strings attached. How do you forgive someone when they mess up? My forgiveness can sometimes look like who cares or whatever or just blowing things off. But what I love about our God is that he doesn't respond in that way. He doesn't respond like we do. He responds in a way of love and care and true forgiveness. The kind of forgiveness that looks you right in the eye and says, I love you. I forgive you. And I'm for you. The Bible talks about this in 1 Corinthians 13, and it says, love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. That's what true forgiveness looks like. So I ask you, where in your life do you need to forgive? I bet you there's somebody that you can reach out to and say, hey, I forgive you, doesn't matter what happened, or even what will happen. I forgive you because I love you. And imagine if we set that example, right? What if people looked at you and me and said, that's a forgiving person. And in turn, we can say, we only know what true forgiveness looks like 
because God has forgiven us. Love asks us to let go of our records are wrong. And our anger. Ooh, mystery hand, hello, hey. thank you. <laughs> Challenge card. Okay, eagle eyes. Can you spot what's wrong? In each of these images, there are five differences. Yell them out when you see them. Our scorekeeper will keep track. The person who gets the most correct doesn't have to eat the very wrong cupcake. Oh. Uh-oh. We've Here you go, Mr. Hand. We've Thank had you. wrong cupcakes before. It's, it's not They're good. They were very salty. All right. <laughs> Take a look. All right. All right, the, the shirt thing is different. Uh, uh, the cactus plant is different. Uh, the the, the Rubik's cube, cube is gone. Rubik's cube. Uh, the cup is in a different spot. No, it's not. No, okay. Uh, Necklace on the okay. person. Uh, earrings are different. Oh, yeah, different color. That's fine. How's things. it going, Tommy? Am I doing great? It's close. <laughs> it is close. It is. Okay, round two. Ooh. Uh, All right, they're lights like, different. It. The, the Ooh, London, uh, the jersey, uh, the back of the jersey has a name. Uh, the sign, the color of the sign. Color sign, very nice. Uh, the, mm. Oof. There are two more left. Wow, that's tough. Uh, how about this guy's shirt? No, that's not different. Ah, okay, shop sign above the exit and the exit sign. Bingo. These are my favorite kinds of puzzles growing up. One more hanging over your head process of elimination, something else should be in this quadrant. No, it is overhead. Like at the top. I just can't see it. Look at the ceiling, please. Oh, it's this. High five. Oh, nice, JV. Thanks. Yeah, the light was missing in the top. Oh, wow, cute. that was really that good. That was. It's fun. This is fun, though. Whoever gets the most doesn't have to eat, right? So it's just the most. That's what, we're, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Just checking. OK. Oh, my gosh. Round three. Somebody oh. took my ham sandwich. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to break in and say this. Here's the thing. I put. I put that ham sandwich in the fridge with my name on it, and somebody took it. They took it out. And if I find out who took it out, oh boy. The payback will be rich. Can you train a hawk to fly in and steal someone else's sandwich? Whoever it is, I'll figure out what street they live on, go down to the courthouse, and legally change the name of the street to Sandwich Thief Street. Oh, ho, 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 the payback. Oh. And I open the box. And then the bees will fly out. Can you rent a panther? You'll never see that panther coming. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a quiz question will help me cool off. One of these early appliances was not particularly dangerous to households when it was introduced. Which one was it? Was it A, the toaster, B, the laundry machine, C, the toilet, or D, the refrigerator? Which one of these appliances didn't have a chance of killing you? It was C, because that trusty old toilet is always a friend. The rest were crazy dangerous. The toaster could burn everything down, the laundry machine could rip your arm off, and early fridges used toxic gases like methyl chloride as a refrigerant, which could leak out and be fatal to your entire household. This is one of those times where it's actually a good thing for us to say, they don't make them like they used to, because they could kill us. Back before refrigeration systems, if you wanted to cool your food down, you had to use ice and snow to keep your food cold. If you find a ham sandwich in the snow, don't eat it. Now, let's say I don't get over this whole sandwich situation. Let's say that I choose to hold a grudge. Somebody wronged me, and I want to wrong them right back. If I bide my time, plot my revenge, and wait until the exact right moment to strike, what popular phrase would I be demonstrating? Is it A, all's well that ends well, B, revenge is a dish best served cold, C, payback comes for the wicked, or D, nuking the fridge? If you said C, you're wrong, but it would be a cool tagline for a movie. Payback comes for the wicked. It's B, revenge is a dish best served cold is a French saying that means the revenge is a much more satisfying cool dish when the person least expects it. You let that wound fester. You let them fear when your payback is coming and then you strike. And you know what? It is really satisfying. We're so used to seeing vengeance as a rewarding experience that we write it into all of our stories and we give it to our heroes as something to strive for, something they should want. That's why when Jesus preached forgiveness instead of payback, people thought he was confused. They thought he was wrong. They were so comfortable with an eye for an eye. But Jesus had a radically different idea. He told us to cool down 
and forgive the people who hurt us. Do what now? That's weird, right? That doesn't make any sense. He said when someone takes our stuff or hurts our feelings or wrongs us in some way, that we make the first move towards forgiveness, not retaliation. Because we love others more than the diminishing rush of payback. You're not my enemy. You're a person. You're my brother. You're my sister. I want to clarify something real quick. Forgiving others isn't about being a doormat. That's like letting everyone walk all over you. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about just putting a bunch of ham sandwiches in the fridge and letting them get stolen over and over and over again. If you're being bullied or someone is hurting you, tell a trusted adult. They can help you pray for your enemies and protect your health. That's really important. The selfless love of Jesus gives every one of us a lifelong challenge. Will you practice forgiveness? As you cool down, are you gonna let toxic vengeance leak out and destroy your household? Or are you gonna let go of your anger and walk grudge free? Listen, this challenge, it's not easy. Payback is easy. Holding on to bitterness and resentment and grudges, that's super easy. But when we choose forgiveness, when we serve others instead of serving vengeance, we look like God. We become love to the people around us. And that's pretty cool. Instead of looking for vengeance, now I've got to look for lunch. I'm the quiz man. Goodbye. Tommy, do we have any leftover meat cake? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love is not rude. Love does not seek itself the most. Love is not easily angered Love keeps no record of wrongs Love does not delight in evil But rejoices with the truth Love always protects Love always trusts Love always hopes It never gives up Love always protects Love always trusts Love always hopes our final chance to see whoever is going to have to eat the all wrong cupcake. Let's see if we can spot what's wrong. Woo! Go. Bird. Oh, the flag. Flag. The color of the bag. Ooh, that's so good, Jamie. Uh, the number of kids? No. <laughs> uh. Is something missing? Oh, uh. one of the statues is missing. Dang it. On the, on the back, or like towards the left. This is draining. This is oh, this is missing. The sewage. Ah, the sewer grate. Yay. Well done, Jamie. Yeah, well done, sir. Now bonus points. Which one's the real one? Oh, boy. I, th I think it's this one. And if it's right, I get points, right? Okay, let's see who the winner is. All Woo! Right. Let's see. All right. Winner, winner. Here we go. Oh, what is that? This is my shopping list. Oh. You guys, love doesn't list. keep score. So we didn't either. No one has to eat anything <gasps> gross. Really? Uh, Woohoo! That's great. Clam juice, pickles. Oh, oh no, I meant that one. This is our puppy Frankie. Mwah. He's a sweet boy. <laughs> He's also a wiggle worm. So we have two dogs. We have Daisy and Frankie. And when Frankie was a puppy, he was about this big and obsessed with chewing everything. And by everything, I mean specifically my stuff. Like at one point, I think he destroyed one of every pair of shoes that I owned, or he got into my makeup bag once and ate an entire tube of red lipstick. Just gone. And over time, the more that he did this stuff, the more upset I would get. And I realized I was having a really hard time forgiving Frankie for destroying my things. And then I started thinking about all the things that I've done wrong and all the things that God has forgiven me for. And, and think about this, because this is crazy. Not only does God forgive us when we sin, He forgives us 
before we sin, knowing that we are going to sin. He doesn't wait until we are perfect or till we're gonna get everything right. God chooses to forgive us. And he sets this example of forgiveness, which tells me then that it's my job to forgive others. I wanna look at a scripture real fast. It's in the book of Ephesians 4, 31. And it says that we should get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. These are all things that happen when someone hurts us or betrays our trust and we haven't forgiven them. But the Bible says that we need to get rid of all of these things, not because we're good or because we're being the bigger person, but because God forgives us first. So why do we forgive? You know, because those inside things, you know, bitterness and rage and anger, they build and they start to seep into every part of who we are. And those outside things, fighting and talking about people behind their backs and wishing that they would get what they deserve, those things start to seep into all of our relationships, even the ones that we have with people who haven't hurt us. And, and even more importantly, we forgive because we have been forgiven. You know, it says that even while he was on the cross, Jesus was praying for those who were crucifying him. He was asking God to forgive them. And, and our goal is to become more and more like Jesus every day. And Jesus was all about forgiveness. And so as we're forgiven, we forgive. This is the remix. Because God forgives us, the way we forgive others looks different from the rest of the world. We make the first move. We show honor instead of anger. We don't require payback or probation. It's life-changing to forgive people like Jesus forgives us. There's nothing else like it for our friendships. It's helpful, it's healing, it's the love remix the world needs. Okay, so after experiencing um, really great forgiveness, uh, <laughs> I feel like I probably moved my number up a little bit on oh, my forgiveness scale yes. because being forgiven uh, probably feels it feels nice. And not having to eat a gross cupcake. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah, the game was really fun though. I enjoyed it. I really liked yeah. it. Yeah. I love that we don't have to keep a record of wrong because it can be exhausting. And as we practice forgiveness, it gets easier to show to everyone. Love doesn't keep score. It doesn't demand payback or look for revenge. Forgiveness mends broken friendships. So throw out your record of wrongs. And as you live and forgive others, don't forget to enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. All right, so the Bible tells us that love doesn't keep score, right? It doesn't keep account of wrongs. So my challenge for you this week is to spend some time with the Lord and pray about how you can bring forgiveness into more of your relationships. And think about maybe the times that you've hurt someone. Apologize, ask for forgiveness. And then also here's the hard part. Think about the people that have hurt or upset you and choose to forgive them. Just as God forgives us, we can forgive others. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your forgiveness. Thank you that your love lasts even when we do things that are wrong. And God, help us to have the same grace for the people around us. Help us to step out of our pride and apologize when we're wrong and to forgive those that have hurt us. In your name we pray, amen. Now, everyone struggles with unforgiveness at some point in their life, and that's okay. But make sure that you don't stay there. Reach out to your small group leader or your parent and let them help you take a step out of that.